Um, so I just want to explain to you what a T cell engager is or a bispecific T cell engager. A lot of you have heard, you know, just via the past presentations about CAR T cells. And the thing I would em emphasize here is T cells. So all of us have an army living inside of us, which is our immune system. And our immune system is comprised of T cells, macrophages, all types of parts of the army, if you will, and they're standing by all the time as you're eating right now, showers of bacteria are going into your bloodstream, and your immune system is ready to attack and you know, ready to eat up all that bacteria. You know, the same thing can actually happen in cancer, but for some reason, for myeloma in particular and other types of cancers, it's a little complacent, and we don't know why. It's almost been subjected to a Jedi mind trick, if you will. Um, or, or for those who like Harry Potter, an in, invisibility in cloak that the cancer is, is wrapped up in. Um, clearly, I have kid, young kids at home. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the question is, how do we get your own T cells to work for you to kill and recognize myeloma? Now, one way we could do that is actually, like Dr. Shaw said, take those T cells out and put a homing beacon on it. But it does take some time to grow up those T cells. You know, you heard two to four weeks, and some folks can wait those two to four weeks to get treated. Um, so it would be wonderful if we had something just off the shelf that you could just pull right off the shelf and just infuse you with right now um, so that you can get rapid control of your disease. And because of that need and because of that interest, that's where the biospecific T cell engagers came into um, discovery and in existence. So what this really is, is basically, it's a modified antibody, if you will, with, with two arms. One arm is against the myeloma, a protein on the myeloma um, called BCMA in this particular instance. And the other um, arm is to the T cell. Um, and basically, once it gets infused into the patient, it just brings them together. It's kind of like a matchmaking service, except they're gonna fight. Um, <laughs> Um, in your favor. Um, so, you know, you bring them together and the hope is that they will, the immune system would then recognize that this is an invader and kill it off. Um, and that's really how these drugs work. What's interesting about these, this modality of treatment, it's actually very, it's still being investigated. We don't have any FDA approved drugs for myeloma with this type of technology, but it is coming. And we want to, you know, we already have um, trials here at UCSF that utilize this technology, but they are sponsored by the pharmaceutical companies. We will love to develop these types of drugs as well as UCSF using uh, Arun's um, discovery of new targets because I think that's really important. You know, as you ha we have talked about before, you know, we need not just one modality of treatment, we need to get at this through multiple various ways. So that's a quick brief introduction um, to, to the T cell engagers. And now I want to uh, present um, uh, Debbie Yaman, who is one of our patients, and her doctor, Tom Martin, to come to the stage and they're going to talk about their experience. Okay. Thanks. No, you keep that. You keep that. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. No, no, no. Don't go anywhere. I have a few questions for you before you leave. Okay. So we have. Um, I don't know if there's any, um, you know, people that have been in the service. But if you have, great. Thank you so much. But we have many fractions of the service, right? We have army. We have navy. Mar Marines. We have everything, right? So tell us about another group. What about the? What's an ADC? So ADC. And what do you have going for an ADC? <laughs> Um, you want me to show all my cards now? Okay, so um, ADC stands for antibody drug conjugate. So this is another modality of treatment that's been investigated for myeloma. Actually, um, so there is a uh, target on myeloma that was discovered actually um, here at UCSF. The target is called CD46, and it's very highly expressed on myeloma and not much on other tissues. And it was actually with the support of the Multiple Myeloma Translational Initiative and Tom and Jeff you know, networking and finding the, the right scientists that um, they really gave some, them some money, this particular lab, because they were looking at it in prostate cancer. They weren't thinking about myeloma. And when we asked them to take a look at it in myeloma, it found, they found that it was really efficacious in myeloma samples and in, in the mice. And actually now, it's actually in the clinic being studied in a phase one clinical trial. But what it is, is basically, is an antibody that is targeted against CD46, which is on myeloma cells. And there's a warhead, essentially, on this antibody. So it's 
it's basically like a missile that once infused into you will go straight to the myeloma cells and the myeloma cells take up this antibody and inside the myeloma cells essentially releases the antibody drug conjugate. It's like a bomb inside the myeloma cells and the myeloma cells then break open. Um, so really exciting stuff is in phase one clinical trials right now at our site um, as well as all throughout the nation. So we're really excited to see the results. Uh, thank you. So, it, it, yeah. it, in fact, Nina also has a trial that's open with another antibody drug conjugate targeting a different protein, CD74. So we have a CD46, a CD74. We have five BCMA-targeted CAR T cells. There's a BCMA-targeted ADC that should be uh, approved for use in myeloma within the next six months. Um, and the, we have another bite that's against GPRC5D, and another bite that's against um, CD38. So in fact, that's over 10 trials that we have in this space of immunotherapy, which is really amazing. So we had a lot of choices. So Debbie, let's, let's go to you. Hold on a second. There we go. All right, Debbie, so not that there's, there's no competition here, right? This is back and forth, so Debbie. <laughs> When, Are you sure? So when did, when did your myeloma history start? <laughs> Our offices are next door. When did, when did you get diagnosed with myeloma? In 2002. Wow, 2002. Hmm. Um, and <laughs> A little sooner than you. <laughs> so, so, we, um, so back then in 2002, we talked you into your first clinical trial, yes? Yes. Do you remember that trial? Yes. Can you tell us what it was? It was a stem cell, and then a, my own stem cell, and then my brother's bone marrow transplant. Yeah, so, it's, so Darcy had a tandem. Well, he said, he had, can, can, they're both on, right? Here, let's get the microphone. So Darcy had a tandem transplant using her own cells. And Debbie had a tandem transplant, one using her own cells, and the second was her brother, who was her donor. So she had an allogeneic transplant. That was back in 2003. So how did we talk into that back then? I was very green. <laughs> so back then in 2003, that was immunotherapy. We thought for sure that the donor's immune system being strong and going right in would help fight the cancer. It, and we knew back in 2000, you know, actually late 90s, et cetera, that it worked in leukemia um, and that when you do a donor transplant that it can fight off the leukemia and patients could be cured. So that was study number one. What did we find? Did I ever tell you what we found out from that study? Yeah. <clears throat> it didn't go into remission. That was one of the things we found out. I went into pre-remission. Yeah. So. Um, it didn't, it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work, okay? <laughs> and that's what happens sometimes in research and studies. That was hard. It was, a, it was a very hard study, right? And she started off with this much myeloma, and after the, her own transplant went down to about here, and after the next transplant, only went down a little bit more. So it was still here. And, it was, and we were hoping to be way down here. And soon thereafter, things started to go back up, right? Um, and so that was, you know, that took us to 2004 and five. And then, and what, then we actually said, well, what, what if we get some more cells from your brother? How many times did we do that? How many times did we give you back cells from your brother? I don't know, you started freezing them. <laughs> I think we did it three or four times, where our hope was, okay, let's, let's wake up the brother's T cells and let's see if we can knock it down more with them. But it didn't work, it just kept, kept going up. And then at that point in time, we did get to some of the new medicines like, like Revlimid and, and Velcade or Bortezomib. And you had, some, you had some responses to that. Do you remember what your side effects were for, from, the, from those? Um, a lot of neuropathy. That's the biggest thing was neuropathy, right? Got in my hands, got in my feet, went up to my tops of my legs. Yeah, and, that, and actually, so you had a nice response with more kind of stabilization of the disease where the myeloma kind of just stayed, stayed stable for, for quite some time. Then we, then we actually put you on one of the first, uh, besides the donor transplant, we put you on one of the first studies that we had in the immunotherapy space. And then back then it was a, 
it was an ADC, an antibody drug conjugate. It was against CD50, CD56, and it was tagged to a poison that is called MMAE. Do you remember that one? No. Okay. <laughs> That's good. There's so many. That's good. I'm glad you did. There's been so many. So you got about three doses of that before your neuropathy actually got a lot oh. worse. And, and so then we had to take you off that one. So we were 0 for 2 in the research space, OK? It was, it was not looking so good in, in terms of that. Right. And then we went back to some standard therapies and did some standard therapies, oh, for, I don't know, five years or so, something like that. And then we put you on your third immunotherapy trial. And that trial was a combination of, of Revlimid, dexamethasone, and the new, at that point in time, we were investigating another CD38. It wasn't daratumumab, but it's the, I say, the sister drug, esituximab. Um, and so you're on esituximab, lenalidomide, or Revlimid, and dexamethasone, and you had a nice response. And again, the myeloma was doing a lot of this, and on that, we actually had to go, on, we had to go down a little bit more. And it was down here. Do you remember, what do you think about the CD38 uh, drug? Do you have any side effects from that? I have got side effects from it. I got side effects from the Velcade and the CD38 from just getting the neuropathy and, yeah. This, so I, the hard things in neuropathy. Yeah, everything had a little bit of a side effect, but, but a lot of them were in combinations um, from the therapy. Um, and so, and then uh, I was at a meeting at, at, at um, ASCO. It was ASCO, probably about two years ago. And so because Debbie had an allogeneic transplant, when it came to the CAR T-cell trials, all the CAR tel are the all the CAR T cell trials, in, specifically in plasma cell disorders and myeloma, um, excluded people that had a prior allogeneic transplant. So I said, hold on, you know, we're going to get you a trial. Don't worry about it. And so at this meeting at ASCO, there was, there was 30 of us myeloma docs around the country. And, and the, the company was saying, well, there's, is there anybody else that we sh should we include in this trial? And I stood up and I said, yes, we need to include allogeneic transplant patients on this trial. There is no other trial out there that's currently um, allowing allogeneic transplant patients on the trial. Um, and they said, yeah, we've been considering that. What does everybody think? And a colleague who's a friend of mine gets up and says, nah, I don't think we should include those patients. <laughs> and I'm like, zip it. <laughs> and then some of the other people in the audience were from Europe, were from Spain. Um, and there was a Spanish contingency there. And actually, in Europe, in fact, they're not as lucky as us in terms of having access to some of these immunotherapies. In fact, even CD38 is a hard thing for them to come by. And they were saying, absolutely, we do allogeneic transplant on a lot of patients. We have to include these patients. And at the end of the day, they allowed allogeneic transplants uh, uh, to be part of the trial. So I came back and said, we got it, man. We got it. Now we just have to get the trial open, all righty? So, <laughs> so in fact, at UCSF, it's sometimes been difficult to get trials open. We've, we've switched that up. We've actually made it much better, um, thanks to Joanne's help and others' help. We can do it much faster. But in any event, this one took about a year. So about, I don't know, four or five months ago, I said, all right, our trial's open. It's a CAR-T trial. And what did you tell me? I said, how hard is it? <laughs> because now I'm older, <laughs> and I said, you know, what, is that, what exactly does it consist of? And, and what are the other options? She said. And I said, what, <laughs> what, what, else else, what else do you have? Because I've been reading up on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? And so. lo and behold, at that point in time, Sandy said, we got, you know, we got a, we got a slot on the, on the, on the BCMA biospecific T cell trial. You got anybody? And so the three of us, because Tony, this is Tony, this is Debbie's husband. He's always there. So we talked about it, and we talked about the, the pros and the cons of each one of these therapies. Like Sandy said, one's off the shelf. You can just take it and give it. You do have to come back, but you start weekly for a while, and then maybe you can go to every other week, and then maybe every four weeks. Uh, whereas the CAR-T, it's a kind of one and done, but you're there for a month, and you're a couple weeks in the hospital, and you need to be in San Francisco on this side of the bridge for, for at least a month. Um, and, and so we basically thought about all those things, and so what did you decide? Decided, decided on the bite trial. Because I also said, if it doesn't work, can I do the CAR-T cell? And what did you say? 
To me. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm so, yeah, saying we're gonna, this in we're front gonna of We're going to make everybody. our own. We're going to make our own cars. Yes. Okay. Let's no, try we, this we, one first. We always have. We have <laughs> always had it for the 20 years. We've always had something in our back pocket. So yeah. that we said, "This is the next thing we have. This is the thing we have in our back pocket." Right. Right. So tell us, how did it go? It has been wonderful. There is no longer any cancer in my bone marrow. I'm. <laughs> I have very little, it's 0.4 in my paraprotein. So I, within a month, I should be in complete remission. And might I add, I've never been in remission in 18 years. So, so I, I, I told you, bomb. yeah, I, I told you I did this for a reason because Debbie did this and this and this and this and maybe this, and now she's this. Okay. <laughs> So what about side effects? I haven't experienced any side effects. Hmm. None. Hmm. It's so. No, um, I don't. I can't tell that it's any worse. It just seems the same as what I've had before. So nothing has changed there. Um, and the benefit of BCMA is it's literally only on plasma cells, cells of plasma cell ori origins. Again amyloid cells, myeloma cells, Waldenstrom cells, those have it. Normal plasma cells have it, but not nerve cells, no. And so this, there is not a toxin swimming around in the blood like with other drugs and things that we use to cause neuropathy. So there should be no neuropathy. And the other thing is, other than the, other than the antibody, the, the bispecific antibody, what other drugs are you getting like with it? None. 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 Nothing. It's one drug. It's not multiple drugs. No. It's not and dexamethasone or and Revlimid no. or and Velcade. It's no. one, dr one you drug. You go in, get it for two hours, you're gone. So I'm on every other week right now. Yeah, it's pretty, great. pretty amazing. So um, questions for Debbie's experience. How long are you doing that? I've signed up for two years. Well, that's a really great question. But we don't know for sure. <laughs> so, so the... Um, this is experience. So the, the, before we answer that question, I'm going to say, so how many frequent flyer miles do you think you have for clinical trials? <laughs> she has a lot. That's why she, got, she got into business and she in the has very been beginning. Li and lying out in business for a while on this, which is awesome. <laughs> but in fact, you, once you're on a trial and it's working and it's a not approved drug, most of the time we continue people on the drug because if we come off it, there's no going back. You don't get it back offered again. You get, so, so most people, she's going to get it. She get it weekly for a while and every other week for a while. Then it'll be monthly for, for a while. And then, then eventually, if we decide you know, we can't detect anything for a while and she has sustained MRD negativity, we may say, you know what, let's, let's stop for a while. Or if it gets FDA approved while she's on it, we can say, well, now we can go back on it. Or a different drug's FDA approved. We can go back on that drug. We can give you a holiday and stuff like that. So that's kind of how we, we deal with stuff like that. But you know, to your question earlier too, so you know, when people talk about eight or nine or 12 different kinds of myeloma, that's mostly defining it from the inside of myeloma. What, are the, what is the DNA on the inside, okay? We're going at it on the outside. And most of the time, the cell surface is very similar amongst those eight, nine, 12. And as, as Arun was saying, we're going to try to, we're going to, try to look at the cell surface of all these uh, you know, myeloma cells and try to find these common targets. And at the end of the day, down the road, it's not going to be that we're just going to get a BCMA-targeted therapy. We're going to get one to BCM. We're going to, have a, we're going to have a menu. Say, yep, we'll take that BCMA one. Yep, we'll take that GPRC5D one. Yep, we'll take that one that has CD138. And we're going to do that for three months. And then, and then we're going to see what's, what's left after three months and go from there. It's really sci-fi. It's amazing, actually. Other questions for Debbie? Thank you, Debbie. <laughs>